The Hawker Hunter, or just the Hunter, was the most advanced first generation jet fighter. So it might be more accurate to say this aircraft was a first plus generation. The Hunter had continuously adapted to the new requirements during its 60 years of service. It fought over Africa and Asia. Today we are investigating the Hunter, the best of the first generation. The Hunter is undoubtedly one of the most successful fighters in British aviation history commercially and with its combat career. Even though it was one of the latest examples of the first generation jet, this aircraft had long service life and went head to head with its technologically superior rivals in the market for a long time. The war weary UK was optimistic about world peace after the second world war and not keen to spend money on a new jet fighter development program. But the first Cold War quickly arose and the Royal Air Force, shortly RAF, realized the need of a new jet interceptor with swept wings which offered better handling at high speeds. Also, the rising popularity of the US combat aircraft was threatening the traditional markets of the British aviation industry. In 1947, the UK ordered two experimental aircraft called P1052 from the Hawker Aviation Company. They were nothing but the Seahawks outfitted with a 35-degree swept wing. Later, the company converted the second P1052 prototype into the Hawker P1081 as a private venture, which had a revised fuselage, a single jet exhaust at the rear, and swept tailplanes. While trials of the P1081 continued, Hawker Aviation had already begun to work on the P1067, which would become the Hunter later. The initial design of the aircraft had a single air intake in the nose and a T-tail. Yet, using the P1081 experience, the company engineers reshaped the P1067 with the intakes moved to the wing roots which made room for weapons and radar in the nose. Besides, they chose a more conventional tail arrangement which provided better stability. The outbreak of the Korean War in 1950 accelerated the program. The RAF had to acquire the license-built F-86 from Canada as it had no jet fighter that could cope with the MiG-15. So, the UK ordered the Hunter from Hawker and the Swift from Supermarine in 1950. It was a kind of insurance policy. If one of these programs failed, the RAF would still have a new jet fighter without losing time. The Hunter made its maiden flight on July 20, 1951 and entered service with the Royal Air Force as an interceptor in 1954 to replace the Gloucester Meteor, the Canada Sabre and the De Havilland Venom. Belgium and the Netherlands also produced the aircraft under license as a joint program sponsored by the USA. Likewise, Washington funded the Hunters of the Royal Danish Air Force. With its superior climbing feature, maneuverability and acceleration capability, the Hunter quickly became the favorite of pilots. Also, it was an easy-to-handle aircraft which forgave the mistakes of inexperienced pilots. The Hunter's removable gun pack and pressurized fueling system made rearming and maintenance easy. The aircraft had six interchangeable major sections. The forward fuselage, center fuselage, rear fuselage, tail unit assembly and two individually produced wings. This design allowed for the division of production which reduced vulnerability of the manufacturing sites in a possible war. The Hunter was an all-metal aircraft. The fuselage was of monocoque construction. Yet, the rear section was removable for engine maintenance. The Hunter had a nose-mounted Echo ARI 5A20 ranging radar, providing range input to the gyro gun sight for air-to-air -air gunnery only. Despite these good qualities, the early Hunters also experienced many setbacks. So, Hawker had to update the aircraft constantly. For example, the powerful 30mm Aiden cannons pulled the nose up during the fire due to high recoil force. Later, the guns were fitted with recoil buffers looking upwards to solve this problem. Of course, this was a minor change. For more crucial problems, new variants were developed. The early production variant, the Hunter F1, had one 28.91 kN Rolls-Royce A1103 turbojet engine which proved to have poor surge margins and worryingly suffered compressor stalls during the cannon fire, sometimes resulting in flameouts. The only difference in the F2 version was to have the 35.59 kN Armstrong Sidley Sapphire 101. 
This engine had better fuel economy, but some reliability issues. A modified variant called Hunter Mark III broke the world air speed record for jet-powered aircraft, attaining a speed of 1,171.01 km per hour on September 7, 1953. The early variant of the aircraft had a critically short range. For example, because a thick fog didn't allow landing, eight Hunter F1s diverted to a second airfield 19 km away, but it caused the loss of the six aircraft due to running out of fuel. So, the new variant, the Hunter F4, was fitted with back-type fuel tanks in the wings instead of the rear fuselage tanks of the F1. This change slightly increased internal fuel capacity. Besides, the F4s had provision for 100-gallon underwing fuel tanks. This variant also had the 35.6 kN A1115 engine. Another problem for the early Hunters was that the ejected cannon ammunition links tended to strike and damage the underside of the fuselage so the F-4s were fitted with blisters under the nose. The Brits called these blisters Sabrinas. Sabrina was a famous British starlet of the time. The Hunter F-5 was an F-4 with the Sapphire 101 engine. The Hunter Mark 50, Mark 51 and Mark 52 were the export variants of the F-4 for Sweden, Denmark and Peru respectively. The Swedish Air Force designated its Hunters as J-34. Like the Dutch F-4s, the J-34s could carry two AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. One Swedish aircraft was fitted with a locally designed afterburner in 1958, but the result was far from satisfactory and the project was cancelled. Despite all these corrections, the RAF was still unhappy with the thrust power of the A1-100 series engine. So, Rolls-Royce developed the 44.48 kN A1-203 which would be fitted to the Hunter F6 variant. This version also had revised wings with a leading edge, dog tooth and four hard points. The Hunter now reached maturity. The Brits also tested reverse thrusts on this variant to reduce landing distance, but they preferred a less complex and less expensive brake parachute. The Hunter F6 version with brake parachute and 230 gallon inboard drop tanks was the F6A. The Hunter Mark 56 Mark 58 and F60 were the export variants of the F6 for India, Switzerland and Saudi Arabia respectively. The Hunter was a first generation fighter. However, in the late 1950s, the second generation ones began to be tasked with frontline service in all major air forces. So, the RAF retired the Hunter F6 from its day fighter role. Now, it was time for the English Electric Lightning on this mission. But it was not the end for the Hunters. The existing aircraft were converted to ground attack and close support roles and redesignated as the Hunter FGA-9. This variant had 230 gallon inboard drop tanks, a tail chute, increased oxygen capacity and strengthened wings. The Hunter FGA-56A, FGA-57, Mark 58A, FGA-59, FGA-70, FGA-71, FGA-73, FGA-74, FGA-76, FGA-78 and FGA-80 were the export versions of the FGA-9 for India, Kuwait, Switzerland, Iraq, Lebanon, Chile, Jordan, Singapore, Abu Dhabi, Qatar and Kenya respectively. The Swiss Hunter Mark 58A could carry AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air and AGM-65 Maverick air-to-surface missiles. In the late 1970s, Singapore upgraded its Hunter fleet by equipping them with three additional hardpoints. The modernized FGA-74s were redesignated as F-74S. The Hunter T-7 and T-8s were the two-seat training variants of the aircraft. These variants with a side-by-side -side seating arrangement carried one or two 30mm Aiden cannons. The Hunter T-8B was designed for the Blackburn Buccaneer conversion training role. Similarly, the Hunter T-8M with the Blue Fox radar was used for the Royal Navy for the training of the Sea Harrier pilots. The Hunter GA-11 was a single-seat weapons training version for the Royal Navy. The Hunter FR-10 and PR-11 were single-seat reconnaissance variants. The two-seat Hunter Mark 12 was avionic development trial aircraft for the Royal Aircraft Establishment. 
Abu Dhabi, the United Arab Emirates, Belgium, Chile, Denmark, India, Iraq, Jordan, Kenya, Kuwait, Lebanon, the Netherlands, Oman, Peru, Qatar, Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, Saudi Arabia, Singapore, Somalia, Sweden, Switzerland and the United Kingdom were users of the aircraft. The Hunter F6 variant had a length of 13.98 meters, a wingspan of 10.26 meters and a height of 4.01 meters. Its wing area was 32.4 square meters. The aircraft's empty weight was about 6,400 kilograms, while its maximum takeoff weight was about 11,150 kilograms. One 45.13 kN Rolls-Royce Avon 207 turbojet engine provided a top speed of 1,151 km per hour. Its service ceiling was 15,000 meters, in other words, 50,000 feet. The aircraft's range was 3,100 km. The Hunter F6 had four 30mm Aden cannons. It had four hardpoints and could carry 3,400 kg of bombs and rockets. The hunters of the IRF fought over Egypt, Brunei and Yemen in 1956, 1962 and 1964 respectively, where they proved themselves in ground attack and close air support roles. But the Indian hunters had a more intense career. During the Sino-Indian War in 1962, they gave India a strategic advantage in the air against the Chinese MiGs. This superiority deterred the IL-4 bombers of the PLAAF. During the Indo-Pakistani War in 1965, the Indian hunters encountered the Pakistani F-86. In air combats between these two aircraft, they shot down six sabers in exchange for eight losses. Six years later, Indian hunters bombed the Atak oil refinery to limit Pakistani fuel supplies. Also, six of them stationed at J. Selmir Air Force Base halted the Pakistani advance at Longewala by conducting non-stop bombing raids. The Pakistan Air Force claimed that it shut down 32 hunters during the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971. Yet, we should add that India has denied many of these Pakistani claims. Surprisingly, the hunters achieved relative success in the hands of the Arab pilots, who are generally considered inferior to their Israeli counterparts. A Lebanese hunter shut down an Israeli jet in the early 1960s. During the 1967 Six-Day War, Five Iraqi hunters raided the Israeli airfield in Kfar Sirkin and destroyed one Noratlas and one Piper Super Cup on the ground. During the War of Attrition, another Iraqi hunter, piloted by Saiful Azam, who was a Bangladeshi pilot from the Pakistani Air Force, shot down three Israeli jets, including a Vatul and a Mirage 3CJ. The Jordanian hunters shot down two Mirage 3CJs in 1964 and 1966, respectively. During the 1973 Yom Kippur War, the Iraqi hunters destroyed at least three SPHs of the Israeli 329th Battalion. But also, many Arab hunters fell victim to the Israeli Air Force. On October 15, 1980, the Iraqi hunters halted the attack of the 291st Tank Battalion of Iran. During the Iran-Iraq War, a hunter shut down an Iranian F-5E. In exchange, two of them fell victim to the F-4s. During Operation Gatling in 1978, eight Rhodesian hunters forced the whole Zambian Air Force to wait on the ground. The polite but threatening conversations of the squadron leader Chris Dixon with Lusaka Airport Tower, whose callsign was Green Leader, was one of the unforgettable events in the military aviation history. After Rhodesia became Zimbabwe, the South African saboteurs destroyed 9 of 13 hunters of the Air Force of Zimbabwe in 1982. The remaining aircraft fought during the Second Congo War. According to Egyptian sources, the Saudi hunters shut down two IL-28s of the Egyptian Air Force near Sana'a in 1966. These aircraft also fought in the civil wars in Lebanon and Somalia. Jordan used them to halt the Syrian tanks during the Black September Crisis. The British Black Arrows and the Blue Diamonds, the Swedish Acro Hunters, the Swiss Patrouille Suisse and the Singaporean Black Knights aerobatic teams used the Hunters for many dazzling maneuvers. In 2014, the Lebanese Air Force, the last user of the aircraft, retired the Hunters. After 60 years of proud military service, 
the hunters are still flying with civil registration. It was the last and the most successful example of the first generation fighter jet. This old timer bird fearlessly defied its second generation rivals for many years. The hunter, the pride of the British aviation industry, is indisputably a true legend. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.